I recently made some improvements to the KIM1 support in the MAME emulator, which I'd like to demonstrate. The KIM1 was an early 6502 based microcomputer, which I've covered in some other YouTube videos. MAME is software which can emulate many early computer, video game, and arcade machine platforms on a desktop computer. As I showed in an earlier video, the MAME emulator supports the KIM1's LED display and keypad. The KIM1 also supports a serial interface to a terminal or printing teletype. Until now, this was not supported in MAME, but I recently made some code changes to add it, and they're now in the most recent development version. Note that this demo is running on Linux, but should work the same on the Windows and Mac platforms. You can now see a terminal screen in the display. This is configurable in MAME using video options, screen number zero, and selecting keypad, LEDs, and screen. On a real KIM-1, a hardware signal determines whether the serial interface is used rather than the front panel display and keypad. On my KIM-1, I have an external I.O. board from Corsham Technology that brings the serial port out to a standard RS-232 interface and provides a switch to enable the serial console. On the MAME emulator, you can enable the terminal using input settings, toggle inputs, and set TTY to on. Now the display and keypad are no longer active. As on a real KIM-1, you hit the reset button and then press enter or delete a few times on the terminal so the KIM-1 can determine the serial port baud rate. It then displays KIM and accepts commands. You can run the serial monitor commands which include the following. You can enter a hexadecimal address followed by a space to see the contents of memory at that address. Typing a byte of hex data followed by a dot will write the data to the address. Hitting return will advance to the next address. Line feed will move to the previous address. And delete will terminate a memory edit. The L command will load a program over the serial interface in paper tape format and the Q command will dump a range of memory to the console in paper tape format. Finally, typing G will go or start execution from the current address. The commands are rudimentary but provide what was minimally needed to enter and run small programs. Microsoft BASIC was offered for the KIM-1. Here I can demonstrate loading it from simulated cassette tape and then running it. I have MAME set up with the required WAV file for BASIC. We call the routine at 1873 to start loading from tape. And then hit F2 to instruct MAME to simulate tape playback. Loading of BASIC from tape took about 15 minutes on the KIM-1. Many people used a program called HyperTape, which sped up loading. I'm using it here, but I've also sped up the video. After a few minutes, loading is complete and we can start BASIC at address 4065. It comes up and we get a prompt for memory size. I enter the decimal address of the highest memory available, more about that in a minute, which is 24575. For terminal width, we can just hit enter to accept the default. Then it prompts whether to include some math functions. Saying no will free up a little more memory if they're not needed. 
Now we can enter and run basic programs. Note that to run basic, you needed to expand the memory on the Kim one as it only came with 1K. The MAME emulator supports several memory expansion boards, one of which I've enabled here. Here's an example of running a small basic program. This one calculates the numbers that are perfect squares. As well as the on-screen terminal, you can configure MAME to use a pseudo TTY, which can be connected to a serial terminal emulator program or even a real serial port. This is one method you can use to upload and download programs to the Kim one from a computer using the paper tape format rather than cassette tape. I originally thought that supporting a serial console would be difficult to implement in MAME because the Kim one implements the serial protocol using bit banging rather than a full UART but it turned out that MAME had all the support in place to do this. With these changes, the Kim1 emulator is much more useful as you can run console-based programs like basic games. That's all for now. Oh, and I've also made some enhancements to the MAME emulation for the Heathkit H8 computer, which I may show in a future video.